Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard Tactics video and today guys I've got some really exciting news because this week Games Workshop updated the Warzone Nephilim Grand Tournament Mission Pack with an FAQ and in that FAQ there was a very very important update for the Imperial Guard our secondary objective Inflexible Command has been updated and let me tell you guys it is now much much Better. In fact, this is such a big and important update that I think that Inflexible Command is probably an auto-include for any Guard Army now as a secondary objective. So what is this update that makes Inflexible Command so good? Well, the FAQ says, page 29, Inflexible Command. Change each instance of from your army, in the first two bullet points to read, from your army that is on the battlefield. Now what this means is that you can now have things in reserve, you can now have things in transports and it will no longer break Inflexible Command. For those of you that don't know how Inflexible Command used to work is it said every single unit in your army had to be within range of a tank or an officer, okay? And that meant that if you had anything in reserve, anything in transports, Inflexible Command did not work. And now what Games Workshop has said is no, that's not what we intended. What we mean is if it's on the battlefield, it needs to be in range of a command unit, okay? So that is the change, and now I want to take a look at how it's going to impact the different kind of competitive guard armies that you see there. How is it going to affect you as a player when it comes to picking secondaries and building your game plan and all of those things that we've talked about before. So the first army that I want to talk about is hybrid guard. Specifically, I want to talk about how this affects your Cadian Hybrid Guard. Now, Cadian is still a really strong way of running your Imperial Guard army, okay? Yes, it does require a lot of CP. Yes, Nephilim has changed the CP game, but Cadian is still very much on the books. Now, it's just not the only way of running your guard competitively. Now, one of the things that makes Cadia so strong is you've got so many tools in the toolbox. So many things that you can do to influence the outcome of the game. And maybe individually, none of them are super powerful, but combined, they add up to a really potent mix. And one of those little tools that you've got in your toolbox is Gifted Commander. Now, that is a Warlord trait. Now, how this Warlord trait works is essentially, after both players have deployed their army, the Cadian player can choose up to three non-vehicle Cadian units and redeploy them or put them in reserve. Now, this is actually a really powerful thing. Sometimes you might want to go for an aggressive forward deployment and go, uh, okay, I've got my Demarche tanks up front. Then you don't win the roll off. You're like, okay, I'm not going first. I need to either put these vehicles, you know, back somewhere else. Or how a lot of people use it is you're like, okay, I've got lots of conscripts or lots of infantry. I want to do a big sweeping flanking, outflanking maneuver there and be able to put some pressure over a whole new front, put some pressure on my opponent. Now, prior to this update, Inflexible Command and Gifted Command did not work well together at all because it meant that you would be missing out on turn one uh, Inflexible Command points because your units would be off the board. But now, that doesn't matter. So to be clear, you can have units in reserve. You can use Gifted Commander to open up that extra front and you will still be able to gain your Inflexible Command points because now it's based around units that are on the battlefield, not just in your army as a whole. So that's really, really good. So it opens up all... All sorts of things when it comes to Cadians. Now speaking of other sort of hybrid guard sort of armies, you might be running things like Scions and running a, a detachment of regular guard as well. Now again, in that case, previously, you wouldn't want to leave your Scions off the board for more than a turn because you wouldn't want to be missing out on inflexible command points. But now that's not a problem anymore because you can have units in reserve. You can use things like the Dagger of Tusaka. You can use things like Sands. You can use things like just strategic reserves. And again, it's not going to impact your inflexible command. So it's really good for hybrid guard because it allows you to still be able to use your Cadian tricks. And even if you're not running Cadian tricks, it still allows you to put things in reserve, take advantage of relics, take advantage of Sands, take advantage of a truly combined arms force, and you're not being penalized for anyone. Now, of course, when those units come in, you still have to have them in range of an officer, okay? It's not like they just, they just forgo all of the restrictions, but it just means that now, whilst they're off the board, you're not being punished for it, okay? So as you, you guys can see, that's a pretty big deal for your regular hybrid combined arms guard force. But let's take a look at another army that this is a big boost for. Now, I touched upon them before in the previous example, but this is a really, really big boost for Scions. Like, it cannot be overstated how big a boost is for Scions, because Scions massively rely upon being able to come in, turn two, turn three, have those waves of suicide drop troopers that come in, clear the entire area, kill anything with more than two legs, and then they die. But if you've not, you don't want to have 
all of your firepower come in in one turn, okay? You don't want to be, right, I've got my reserves, my guys in deep strike uh, with my styles, but then I better bring them all in because otherwise I'm not going to be able to get any points. That's how a flexible command used to work for styles. They'd be like, every turn that you're off, you're foregoing a flexible command points, which basically meant that it was just a terrible secondary for styles. They were just never, ever going to pick it. Now... Whilst your science in reserve, it doesn't matter. It's just about the science that you've got on the ground. They're the ones that need to be in range of your command squads or your officers and stuff like that. And let me tell you, as someone who has run science competitively in an intense shark tank environment, I can attest to the fact that you often want what I call the one-two punch. Okay, you want to be able to drop in half of your scions that are in reserve, half of your deep strike troops turn two, and you use that to clear the initial drop zone for the guys that are going to be following up in wave two. Okay, now you clear the area of your first wave and then turn three when you've opened up gaps in the enemy lines because you're going to have your torques primes on the ground and you're going to have your deep strikers. Then turn three comes along and you bring in the next wave of sounds. And typically, those sounds are going to be armed with things like melter guns because now you've got through the screening units and you can get your punch in, you can get your mail to goes in against those big high value targets. Now, again, that used to be a big problem with the flexible command because it basically meant I just, I can't not score any flexible command points for three turns. That's just like insane, do you know what I mean? But now it's like, no, I can be scoring flexible command every single turn of the game going forward now. When I've got something reserved, it doesn't matter. So this is a massive boost sound. And I think honestly, this makes the flexible command almost an auto take like I said for any guard army. And speaking about it being an auto-take for other guard armies, I think this is a massive, massive boost for the final kind of army I want to talk about and the final kind of unit type that I want to talk about, which is mechanized guard. Now, I've talked a lot about reserves and stratagems and warlord traits and relics and all that kind of stuff, but what I haven't talked about is just good old-fashioned transports, your chimeras, your torox, your torox primes, your valkyries, okay, your Hades breaching drills, all that kind of stuff, all right? So previously, if you had a unit in a transport, it didn't count as being on the battlefield, which meant that you couldn't score on flexible command. But now that doesn't matter, because if you've got infantry in a transport, they don't count as being on the battlefield, and that doesn't matter, because inflexible command now only applies to units that are technically on the battlefield. All right, it's a little quirk with how the, the transport rules are worded with 40k. But basically now, inflexible command works with units that are in transports, which is great. So you can have a fully mechanized guard army and it will not miss out on inflexible command. Now, a couple of things you want to be aware of here. You still need to have some infantry on the battlefield. I don't think that means that if you've got no infantry on the battlefield that you automatically get the two points. I don't think that's how it works at all. I think if you were running a mechanized force like I did at a recent tournament, then what you'd have to do is let's say you'd have you know, six kinds of mares worth of infantry. You need at least one of those kind of mares worth of infantry to get out and then to be in range of either a chimera with an officer in it, because the, the chimera with an officer gets the officer keyword, or to get the officer out as well, and to be within six inch range of that infantry squad. So you still need to have some infantry on the ground, but it means that all the other infantry that are embarked in chimeras now aren't screwing you over anymore. So it's really, really good. It works well with transports. It's just, and that applies to hybrid guard, it applies to scions, it just applies in general. Transports are just all over the place with guard in 40k at the moment, in a good way, and we're seeing them all over the place. And so so it's really good that this works with mechanized guard. I can tell you now, if I went back to that tournament that I was at, where I was able to score like 80 points most games, but I was really struggling to get those 90 points, I'd be taking a flexible command every single game. And I would be getting max points on it every single game. I can tell you now that if I took my mechanized infantry army and took it into another tournament, I would score better in every single game. I have just no doubt about that. So it's a massive deal that this now works with transports as well because mechanized guard are a really powerful way to run your guard army. They are very competitive. The one thing they used to struggle with was like secondaries, but now they don't struggle with secondaries, which is really, really good. Now that's all for today's video. Before I forget, I will put a link down to where you can find the FAQs on the Warhammer community page in the description below. So don't worry if you can't find it, I'll put a link down there for you guys. Now if you enjoyed today's video, then please consider giving it a like and subscribing and leaving a comment. To be honest with you, any extra interactivity you can give this video will give it a big boost with the YouTube algorithm. That means more people will see it, more people will be playing the game properly and it'll be helping out the guard community as a whole. So massive thank you to anyone that goes ahead and does that. 
If you've really enjoyed today's video and you want to see more of this kind of content, more meta analysis, more FAQ breakdown, more competitive content, then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. It is thanks to my channel members and my patrons that I'm able to do this kind of content, analyze these FAQs and bring the information back to you guys. So if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. And I just want to take a moment to say a big thank you to our latest channel members and Patreon supporters. So massive thank you to Tim Ailes, Overboard, Daniel Dirig, Greatly Reduced Gameplay, Sweet and Sour Ass, Andrew Fudge, Samuel Gilbert, Justin Fuller-Thompson, Michael Greb, Han, Discock33 and Gamly. Massive thank you guys for becoming channel members and thank you for doing your part. Also want to do a shout out for our latest Patreon supporters as well. Big thank you to Faces Gaming Inc, Gunlock Zero, Sam Lord, Leo Wilson, Eric Cruzat and Antonio Aguilera. Massive thank you guys. Appreciate the Patreon support. It's absolutely incredible. And last but certainly, certainly not least, I want to say a big thank you to all of my top tier Patreon support. These guys are the war masters, the people that have truly and utterly gone above and beyond the call of duty when it comes to supporting the Morden Glory channel. So a massive thank you to Navy Veteran, Philip French, Ross Miller, Alex Dengal, John Stubbs, Nicholas Walsh, Swordfish Trombone, Diesel Fox, Tom Sutton and August Varney. Massive thank you guys. You know how much I appreciate your support, but I'm going to say it every single time. It is amazing. It's unexpected and it's just fantastic. So huge thank you guys. I really, truly, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate it. Thank you boys. Hope you enjoyed today's video. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.